claim. This question on page 15 is like, like a little preparation for that. Something which I mentioned earlier, quite earlier, when we discussed with you Cartesian equations of planes. This time, I'll just revisit this with some extra comments. So this question on page 15, it says you have a plane. Here's the equation of the plane. Parametric equation of the plane. So I'll give you some time to copy that if you copy. I made a picture here. So here's my directional vectors. I call them C and B. This is a position vector A. So this is a vector A. This is a vector B. This is a vector C. Right. So the question there says, uh, I think it says, find the Cartesian equation of that plane. So rather than vector equation, we have to take the vector equation and we have to convert it to the Cartesian equation. Something we've done before. I mean, I did this in class with some method. And I hope you practice this method a little bit when you did your tutorials or independent studies. Uh, I'll, re I'll, I'll revisit this method for you. So what we, what we do when we go to the Cartesian form of the plane, we, of course, we just introduce these unknowns, which are the components of your x vector. And conventionally, rather than going x1, x, x2, x3, we go x, y, z. For three dimensions, it's a very conventional thing to do. And then what we do, we just equate this. We equate this left-hand side to this large right hand side in a pro-component way and we try to get rid of lambda and mu so we try to solve for lambda and mu and then try to get rid of them so basically it looks like this I'll, I'll do this so if i equate this left hand side to the right hand side here's my equations this is the first component negative lambda plus free mu it's this one negative lambda plus free mu that's i swap the sides so my left hand side went to the right hand side and x take two it's this x take this two this is my right hand side. I do the same thing with the other two components. So that's the equation for the second component. Negative 2 lambda, negative 4 mu. It's here. Negative 2, negative 4. And here y plus 1, it's this y plus this 1. And last component also, similarly, will, something, will be something like this. So we have three equations, three unknowns. The method says when you go after the Cartesian form of the Cartesian equation of the plane says you have to, out of this free, you have to do some manipulations to get rid of lambda and mu. Uh, I chose to do something like this. I chose, I chose to do, I chose to pick this last two. I chose to solve for lambda and mu in this last two, and then sub my when I find the solution. So I, I, I chose to find lambda and mu in terms of y and z, and then sub in the first one. That's what I'm going to do. So look at this. What I'm going to do. Uh, I think I'll, uh, yeah, here we go. I just multiply this last one by 2, and I add to the first one. Uh, sorry. I multiply the last one by 2, and I add to the second one. If I do that, the presence of mu will disappear. Uh, what will happen with lambda is will be 8. Take 2, it's 6. The right-hand side will be like this. Let's just double check. It's uh, double z plus y, and negative 4 plus 1, it's such a 1. Now, if I take this double, if I take this multiple of two, and I do it like with this equation, if I multiply now, if I multiply now this by two and add to the last one, by doing so, I will remove the presence of lambda. What will happen with mu is that's what will happen with mu. It will be negative eight plus two is negative six. Right hand side will be double y plus z. And here will be 2 plus negative 2 is 0. So here's my solution for lambda and for mu. I mean, it's not like a, I, I can divide by 6 and negative 6. It will be the solution for lambda and mu in terms of x and y, in terms of z and y, sorry. Now I take this and I plug in here, and that will be done. That will be the Cartesian equation of my plane in terms of x, y, z. So what I will do, actually, I will multiply this by 6, because in, rather than dividing this by 6 to avoid dealing with fractions, Rather than dividing this by 6, I will multiply this by 6. So if I do that, it will be something like this, right? It will be negative 6 lambda plus 18 mu, 6x, take 12. And now I can replace this negative 6 lambda with the negative of this whole thing. And this 18 mu with the triple negative of this thing. This substitution, actually I did this in full here. Here it is. This is a substitution for the negative 6 lambda from here. So negative for this right-hand side. This is a sub for 
this one, which is the triple of this and with an extra negative. So it is six lambda plus, I don't know, wait, ah, yeah, but extra negative is here, actually. Extra negative here in front of the brackets. The right-hand side stays as it, as it was. So if you just rearrange things, if you cancel what you can cancel, if you make it look simpler, here's your Cartesian equation. Here it is. Here's my Cartesian equation of the plane, right? Negative six x from here. Negative seven y is this y and this negative six y. And negative five z, it's neg this negative two and this negative three. And 15 came up because this three, we plus it with this 12. This is a Cartesian equation of the plane. This is something which shouldn't be new for you. This process which I did here, this shouldn't be new for you. We discussed this at length. Well, we discussed this. I don't know if length or not of length, but we discussed this to some extent when we did chapter two, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, three chapters away, three three, cha three chapters ago. Now, what we're going to do now? I mentioned something about this, about the what's what, what's these coefficients? Negative six, negative seven, negative five represent. And this time, I can give you more insight into this, more comments. So, look what you can do now. You can take this equation and you can write it in a slightly different form. Look at this, what I'm going to write now. I'm going to put it like this. I'll open it, the whole thing. Rather than having this equation, I'll convert it into this. Look what I did. I just took this 15 and I sort of split it across different x, y, and z's. I mean, if you expand these brackets, if you take this negative 6, multiply with this negative 2, if you take this negative 7 and factor with this 1, if you take this negative 5 with, with this negative 2, if you do all of this arithmetic, if you bring these all numbers together, it will be 15. Look at this. It is 12 here, right? Negative 6 times negative 2. It is negative 7 here, so it's now 12, negative 7, it's 5. And it is plus 10 here, so it is 15, truly 15. I just split this coefficient 15 across all of these x, y, and z. Why did I do that? Because now, when I look at this expression, when I look at this expression, I can say something like this. I can consider this as a dot product. It's a dot product of two vectors. First vector, it's the first factors in all of these terms. So negative 6, negative 7, negative 5. This vector. And a second vector, it's the vector x take, x take a, isn't it? Because x is the first component in this vector. Negative 2, two sorry, it's a component in the a vector. Y is the second component in this vector. Negative 1 is the second component in the A vector. So this equation now can be just shortened down to this. And what we see now, if I now call this vector N, we see that the N must be perpendicular. This vector, X take A, this is a vector in the, because vector X, vector X, it points to the point across my plane. And when you take a difference, it will be the sum vector lying entirely in my plane. So this vector, which came up in, in the process of my modifications, it should be the vector which is perpendicular to every vector in my plane. It should be the vector which is perpendicular to the plane. It says here, dot product equals zero. If I call this vector n, what is said here is that n perpendicular to the x take a. So my n is my n vector. It's a vector orthogonal to the whole plane. And that's the meaning, meaning of this coefficient, negative, six, negative seven, uh, sorry, negative six, negative seven, negative five. In the Cartesian equation, it's something I mentioned before, and that's now I give you like more or less complete picture of it, why this is so. Of course, in, the, in your equation of the plane, there's another coefficient, which is 15 here, and one of you, I remember probably you, asked what's the meaning of that coefficient. Today, we'll, I, will, I, will, I will explain to you this, this this, the meaning of this coefficient also, just in a few minutes. But so far, uh, that's the explanation why the first three coefficients in the Cartesian equation of the plane, they represent the vector of a normal to that plane. Now, two things I want to mention in, re in relation to this example. First, uh, this form, when you, when you take the Cartesian equation of the plane, in, the, like in, the, in this form, and you convert it to the form like this, or to the form where the dot product involved, this form has a, has a particular name, and I didn't know this name before, but before I just read this lecture notes. In this lecture notes, they, it's called point normal form of the equation of the plane. It's one thing which I want to mention. The other thing which I want to mention now, 
actually this process this process of converting your vector form or parametric form of the plane of the equation of the plane into the Cartesian one now when we know when we know that the this the, the equation can be given in the point normal form and that the first vector here should be the normal this conversion can be now done in a different way rather than solving all rather than doing all of this solving and sub subbing the lambda and mu into the sum of the equations you can now use the cross product for that because the cross product is something which gives you the normal to the two vectors right rather than going for this after this normal vector in this this way i can take these two vectors c and a c and b sorry and take the cross product of those two because if i take the cross product it will deliver some normal and then, then I can write the point normal form of my plane. That's another way how we can obtain the Cartesian equation of the plane if you have the vector form of that plane, yes? Um, when you're deriving the point normal form, how it's x vector minus a vector, mm. um, when you just have to decide the numbers that you put into the brackets to equal 15, is it always going to be the a vector? In a is the first choice. But in fact, you can put any vector which you know which is on the plane already. Any vector which makes this equation happening. I mean, every every triple of numbers which which satisfy this equation can be used here because every every triple of number which which satisfy this equation as a triple of number which makes 15, right? In this combination. And the, 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 remember, the idea was to split 15 into the into the three groups, right? So every triple of number which makes this happening, it's like a sort of splitting of 15. You can use this triple of number. A, of course, is the first choice because it was given to us up front. No, so I'll show you this now. So rather than doing this way of finding your normal or finding your Cartesian equation of the plane, all I, all I can do, I can find the normal. It might be different normal from this one. It might be a bit longer or a bit shorter. It might be the one which facing the other way. But still, it will be the normal which will do the equation of the plane. That's why I call it n sub 1 to distinguish it from this n. It will be a little bit different. You can take the cross product of B and C. And well, when you take the cross product, because you look at this informal determinant, right? Uh, the first line is the i, j, k vectors. Second line is the B vector, components of the B vector. Last line, the components of C vector. And all you do, you compute this cross product. Uh, it is determinant. If you had some experience with computing determinants, it should be very easy to task. Actually, I gave the answer here already. Because well, all of these components are very easily to very easy to find because now the component i, which is the first component in this vector, this is this little minor, and that's the product. Look at this: negative two and two, which is negative four plus sixteen. Negative four plus sixteen is twelve. J component, this is this little minor, this column and this column. So you multiply this negative one with this two, which is negative two, and then three with four, which is negative another 12 so a negative 14 but we remember j comes with the extra negative we alternate the sign that's why it's plus 14 and now k component is this little minor which is negative 1 with negative 4 it's 4 plus 6 that's why it's 10 i told you three times three determinants it's a very easy thing to compute you don't have to do much that's why it's much that's why this method in, in terms of time you spend on it, it it is shorter than this one it's my normal double actual negative double of this but still that's a normal i can use this to produce a point normal form of my plane point normal form of the equation of my plane